Uh, speakers here, Warren uh, Madison from Unity Coalition Prisoners. Welcome, please. Um, some of what I'm going to say, I think, has been stated previously very well by Robert and uh, by Frank. Well, let me say that the uh, Unity Coalition for Israel takes a firm position against the incorporation of Sharia compliant financing in our financial institutions. We are currently undergoing a financial crisis in this country, and this makes it very, very vulnerable to schemes being advanced to put our, our financial house in order with SEF has the potential for far reaching consequences more dangerous than those we face today. We would make a grave mistake to adopt SEF. It is incumbent upon all of us to gain a clear understanding of exactly what Sharia law means and how it would impact not only our financial state affairs, but also have consequences that would conflict with our constitutional rights. And much of this has been discussed before. Sometimes you have to repeat these in order to make the important point. Sharia is a many-faceted system. It's based on strict Islamic adherence to the Quran, the Sunnah, and Adi. Sharia compliant finance is only one aspect of Sharia law. Many people don't realize this. Sharia imposes restrictions on every aspect of Muslim life, as we've heard today. But outside this room, I don't think many are aware of it. It requires non-Muslims to live as dhimmis, second-class citizens is one definition, and be treated in a brutal and demeaning way. It mandates discrimination against women and non-Muslims demands the murder of homosexuals, adulterers, and apostates, and requires violent jihad against all in infidels, including Christians, Jews, Buddhists, and others. It is also characterized by such barrack practices as beheadings, female genital mutilation, amputations for petty crimes, and martyrdom and suicide bombings, all per perpetuated in the name of Allah. Sharia law is seditious because it calls for the violent overthrow of governments like that of the United States and a replacement of democratic constitutional law with its own theocratic code. It seeks to establish Muslim rule around the globe. Sharia is widely practiced in many countries, and you hear the names today, Afghanistan, Iran, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and these are some of the most oppressive regimes in the world under Sharia law. Well, how does SCF work? How does compliance financing work. We have to understand that Sharia finance profit derives from returns on investments in companies that must be purified, partially, by donating a portion of their profits to charity. Charities that receive these donations are selected by Sharia experts who are members of an oversight board. There are allegations that some of the profits support major Muslim organizations suspected of having ties to terrorism. And indeed, recipients such as the Holy Land Foundation, which I believe is still undergoing, undergoing a trial in, I forget where, the Benevolence International Foundation and Global Relief Foundation were closed in December of 2001 for allegedly supporting Islamic terrorism. Some analysts are concerned that Islamic banking will open Western financial institutions to help further the broader Islamic agenda. <coughs> They looked at what is happening here in terms of the end of the world and financial crisis as an opportunity to pour in the billions and billions of petrodollars into the financial systems of the Western world. Their motives are different than what people think they are. It can mean the gradual imposition of the repressive Sharia Islamic law across America. It's like the nibbling effect. How can we justify Western bankers' promotion of practices that would institutionalize and legitimize such action. The Unity Coalition for Israel strongly recommends that no action be taken to oppose Sharia compliance financing on our financial system. Thank you very much.